Today I have three items I am thrilled to share with you. Three unique prototype carbines, the only examples of their kind extent. These are going to be offered in the August premiere sale, and this is going to be a once in a lifetime opportunity to acquire one of, if not all of these, rare, rare prototype carbines. Without further ado, Getting started here, I have the Benjamin Joslin Bar Cylinder Prototype Carbine. This is just a spectacular piece. This is the only one of its kind, I will repeat. It has a breech block that swings out to the right. It functions in a completely unique way. So it swings out, it loads with a Spencer Rimfire cartridge. So mind you, this is right at the tail end of the Civil War era. And at this time, they were looking into rimfire cartridges. And this has that opening breech block and it shuts and it has a spring detent in the rear. Just a neat piece. Anything to do with Benjamin Joslin, I tend to get excited about. Um, he's somewhat known for his invention of the monkey tail carbines for any of our viewers who are familiar. They were patented in about 1855 and then more well known for the Civil War era, model 1862s and 1865s. He was a brilliant inventor. Uh, maybe not as well known as he should be in the modern day, but at the time he was the dude. At the center of the table, I have a Thornton A. Washington patent carbine. This is also just a unique piece. This is it, the only one I know of, the only one likely ever made. This is percussion now and it has the Maynard tape primer system, which is a real neat little feature. So this would have been made, it was actually patented in 1856, and at this time, the US Army, mind you, Thornton A. Washington was part of the US Army, the inventor, the US Army was testing these little carbines with saddle rings on them. So there were quite a few different variants that were sent off for field trials, and they would have sent 170 or so of each of those. This one, I don't think they made more than one. So it didn't go anywhere, but this is right out of William Locke's collection. For those of you who know William Locke, you know that anything he had is a significant piece. It's photographed in his book, and in the book it's actually called a Sims carbine, which I disagree with because the Sims is photographed in Flaterman's Guide. It's a completely different animal. This Thornton A. Washington patent gun uses a lever with a faucet breech, you cock the lever, the hammer automatically cocks with the lever, such a neat feature, and it loads with a paper contained cartridge. What an incredible piece. At the front of the table here, this is an immensely historic item. This is something that we do not get often here. A gun invented right at the end of the Civil War with almost every piece of documentation imaginable, tracking its history right from the inventor's family into the hands of the second owner who sold it to the third owner. And it just has such a great track record leading up to the modern day. It, it's just unreal. Mind you, this is called an Alfred Jenks and Son carbine. Some of you may have seen the Barton Jenks rifles and carbines. We've sold a few through here. Not many, they look a little different. This example's unique. This Alfred Jenks and Son prototype. This has a hammer here that cocks with a bar and it uses kind of what looks like a rolling block system, which is basically what it is. This example on the table was used in the 1865 US Army trials called the Laidley Board. There's a photograph that has all of the carbines, it's called the carbine wheel, this photograph. It has all of the carbines the US Army tested in that trial board in 1865, which is over 40. And this exact piece on the table is pictured. That is a period 1865 photograph with this gun. It's, it's so neat. Um, this gun also went overseas to Europe. It was tested in Britain and France. And the design based on this exact piece, once again, this very gun was sold to the French government for approximately a half million dollars. In 1867, a half million dollars, this gun is the piece that made this man rich. And he actually 
was known as the wealthiest guy in his hometown, Alfred Jenks and his son Barton. So what an incredible piece to have. Um, it, it's, it's kind of wild to think that the French spent that much money on this design and did not make more of them or didn't go anywhere with it. But I don't think he really was concerned about that because he cashed out. What an incredible piece. This is a, a rimfire gun, an early little prototype, and a significant piece of firearms development. If you want a chance to own the best of early advancements in military firearms, look no further than what's on this table. Bid in the August premiere sale.